Nate and I would like to thank the Niagara Corporation for sponsoring today's episode of Let Me Tell You Something. Niagara is the country's leading manufacturer of water-conserving plumbing products, including toilets that reduce water usage by up to 60%. Niagara products were originally designed just for plumbing professionals, but they're now available for homeowners as well. So, if you're remodeling your home or constructing new, check out NiagaraCorp.com to get long-lasting water savings. What's up, good people? It's your boy Isaiah Standback back in the building for another episode of Let Me Tell You Something. Man, it's been a while since I've seen you, Zell. Not, not just face to face or not at training camp. I seen you there, but I'm talking about back in the Dub Network, baby. Let me tell you something. Yeah, we back in here. <laughs> we back in this piece, Nate, dog. Yeah. We had a little hiatus because you and I have been a little occupied, and uh, we had to take our time yeah. because we were over in training camp, 2023 training camp for the Dallas Cowboys. That's where Nate, dog, and myself were residing for the last month. And, uh, man, let's let's get the people updated, Nate. Let's, let's take them back from the time that you – you trans transported yourself from Dallas all the way to Oxnard via your diesel truck. How how did that go? It was great, man. Uh, Twenty hours of bliss, man. Just solitude, you know, listening to the gospel, listening to politics, listening to yeah. everything about the world. I'm telling you, though, them, them radios, man. They, this new streaming system, boy, can keep you connected to the world regardless of where you at. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, we hit. We did have opportunity to hit one show while we were out there at training camp. We were able to have a guest on there, and he pretty much interviewed us. So that was pretty awesome to to have that on there on the platform. But from that time, Nate, there is there was three preseason games, at least for the Dallas Cowboys, that took place. And what were your as we're recording this now? Okay, we're recording this on actual cut down day. Okay, this is. The, the day that the teams have to get down to the 53-man roster. So by the time that this gets posted, I'd assume that most rosters are set. Mm-hmm. But what did you take away, specifically in regards to the Dallas Cowboys, what did you take away in those first three preseason games? Uh, man, I took away what I went in there, man. I was wondering about the offensive line, and I'm still wondering about the offensive line. We have our core starters, you know, Tyron Smith, Tyler Smith, Tyler Biotish, uh, uh, Buster Man, Zach Martin, and Terrence mm-hmm. Steele. Now the other two guys are rookies, you know, and I'm talking about Awesome Richards, I think a fifth or sixth round pick, and uh, TJ yep. Bass, uh, a guy out of Oregon. I don't know if he's a free agent or whatever, but th- those are the two guys we're looking at as backups. Right. And maybe we have to go outside of our roster, uh, somebody else's roster, to get. Uh, to get this this position filled, we need a swing tackle with some some uh, experience, and we need a guard center with some experience. But if not, those are the two guys we're going with. Ball is out for an extended period of time with a bad hip. Uh, well, let's go. He didn't even measure up, and he's injured. So uh, the Cowboys. I went into training camp worried about the offense, the offensive line, and I came out of training camp. Worried about the offensive line. Worried about the offensive yes. line. <laughs> All right, Dave. So you you blew right over the fact that your boy Zach Martin got the absolute bag. What were your thoughts on him, and who had the leverage in that negotiation between the Cowboys, your your man Double J, Mister Jerry Jones, and Zach Martin? Who who had the leverage, and who won that battle? Uh, you know what? Uh, some that, thanks for the softball because. <laughs> All they had to do was line up guys at right guard, and you saw the deficiency. I mean, I'm not going to call no names. We're not going to dog out any players. But he said it wasn't the same. This kid, this kid knew Zach Martin knew the butcher, as his teammates called him. The president, as I got, he knew. You know what? If y'all think y'all can do that with that, have at it. (laughs) It didn't last two weeks. It did not last two weeks. Now he was he was a little disgruntled, let's say that, because at one point in time he was very happy. Right. He was the top highest paid offensive lineman there when he re up yes. last time. But what happened was time passed. And when time passed, he was no longer 
in that upper echelon of highest paid office alignment. Um, as I think he was what three, three or four years into his, I think three years into yes. his contract to his, his extension, which places him, I believe he was $6 million underpaid for his position at this time that he decided to hold out of training camp. So I felt like he had every right to, to do that. And it's a controversial conversation, Nate, because with, when guys re up their contracts and they get an extension, they sign a contract. Yes. And when you sign a contract in any industry, I don't care what industry you're in. That's a, that's a, that's a law abiding contract. And you expect both parties to uphold their end of the bargain. But people are arguing that NFL players are starting to become quote unquote prima donnas because they're not upholding their end of the bargain. What is your thoughts on that? If you're office, you go back, you, you're Nate Newton in today's game and you sign a five year extension and you're the highest paid because you're the, you're the best guard in football. And then three years down the road, you know, guys are getting bigger, better deals because that's just what happens. It's evolution. Guys get more money. The market gets reset every year. Do you feel as if you have a right to then break the contract that you agreed upon to go ahead and now renegotiate in the middle of your agreed upon contract for more money? If if both parties, meaning the NFL and I'm talking about all 32 teams, upheld their end of the bargain on every situation, on through every contract, then I would say uh, players should uphold theirs. But neither side upholds the contract. Wants to mm-hmm. guarantee money is gone. That law-abiding contract they sign normally gets those guys released or, or management acts for less on money. Uh, yeah. So there's no loyalty on, on either side. Uh, people say this would change if it was guaranteed money. Uh, I don't know. The NBA seems to be d- doing well for its contracts. They don't ask for more money or less money. They may ask to be traded, but the money is never an issue. So if the money was guaranteed, was guaranteed Nate. maybe uh, both yeah. sides would have to stick more to what they were saying or how they was doing it. I see what you're yeah. saying there. I am torn because as a business owner, I get it from the owner's standpoint. I make a contract with you. We negotiate. We both agree that this is the rate today and in the future based upon this contractual obligation. We have agreed. We've signed. So from the ownership standpoint, hey, you signed this. You know, you signed this. If you were so conscious about what may happen in the future, maybe you should have negotiated some escalators in your contract. Or maybe you should have negotiated some guaranteed percentages based upon the top paid guy at your position. And those are automatic escalators that that are triggered when other guys, you know, get make start making more money. I don't know, Nate. That's what I would do in today's game. From the player standpoint, you you want to get your value. Yes. If you're still playing at your peak and you're still playing at the best of your position, you should get paid as such. But the, the issue is you agreed to something, yes. right? And you know, they should say, what was the old school saying, Nate? Your, your word right. is your bond. <laughs> you Not only was your word your bond, but your signature was your bond. And when they gave you that bread and you signed on that line, you agreed to that. This is what I agreed to make today. And when I look however many years down the road on, on that same contract, it's, it tells me right now what I'm going to make in the future. And I'm OK with that until I'm not OK with that. OK. Well, and, as an owner, as yeah. an owner and as a businessman. Uh, uh, in our business, the NFL business, what all sports is, it's called a cut. It's called a release. Mm-hmm. Do you now as Correct. an owner, do you feel like. I, okay, this is my fourth year. You still owe me on this contract another thirty-five million dollars. Why would you cut me? You. Will you? Will you? Will you? Mm-hmm. Will you, as an owner, stick to that, or will you go and say, "Hey, you're not as good as you used to be. Can you take less?" And if I say no, would you still give me my thirty-five mil for the next two years? <laughs> 
<laughs> I, a very, very valid point, and that's why this is such that's a what, controversial so discussion. That, that's, that's where what, you're torn at, right? <laughs> absolutely, because I mean, from that standpoint, yeah, the the ownership they want to cry wolf when guys want to re up their right. contracts and they want to go ahead and lean on it and say, well, you agreed to this. And this was, you know, this was in the best interest of the team and da, 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 da. But from the point that you just brought up, Nate, yeah, you, you don't, it's one sided contract right. from the player standpoint, because outside of my guaranteed money that we negotiate, nothing's guaranteed. Nothing is guaranteed. I can get hit by a car tomorrow. I can get, you know, somebody can make an accusation right. against me and I have bad press. And if it's not feeding for the team, then you will cut me in a heartbeat. And to your point, Nate, regardless of the contract that we both obliged mm-hmm. to, you don't have to uphold your end of the bargain. But if you decided to retain me, I would have to uphold my end of the bargain. So why do you have the out, but I don't have the out? And that is where players have, unlike when we played, we had no other choice but the go along with the system. These players don't feel they have to go along with the system. Uh, that word uh, that we use or that saying, your word is your bond, that went out of the window about 15 yeah. years ago. Uh, yeah. Men, women, young children, the world don't follow that creed anymore. That My word is my bond. Yeah. Only when you make me mad or only when I feel I'm being disrespected. <laughs> That's when that, that, my word is my bond. Come on, man. Come on, you're a chain. Yeah, you're, you're a chain. You're, you're chain buns in the middle of a hot dog. If you had a chance, don't do that. Yeah, yeah. All right, all right. So Zach Martin, and for those just just to go over the contract terms, he was scheduled over the next two years, the 2023 season and the 2024 season, he was scheduled to make 27.5 million dollars, and that would have placed him, I think, around 10th for right. his position. Yes. It was around there, Nate. Yes. He held out, like like Big Nate Dog said, he held out until after the first preseason game and allowed them to see what life was like without him. And they switched up real quick because the week before, Double J and the rest of the crew was saying how, oh, he'll be back. Yeah, no, he'll, this is there's getting really expensive for him. There's you know, consequences. He, yeah, there's, yeah, yeah, there's consequences. Well, the consequence was Zach Martin held out and instead of the $27.5 million over the next two years, he got $36 million guaranteed over the next two years. Yeah. So you think that you think they had anything with Spurn, the Trey Lance? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're just going to fast forward three weeks, huh? So, so Nate, Nate Dunn wants to go ahead and fast forward over the three preseason games. Uh, let's go ahead and give you guys a, a synopsis of what took place over those games. You lost a lot of players. Yes, you lost uh, – you already brought up Josh Ball was lost in the last preseason game. Malik Jefferson was lost in the first preseason game. DeMarvion Overshone, this year's second-round draft pick was, linebacker, was lost in the second preseason third round game. Pick for us. You also lost – Third, and even third. I, mm-hmm. I thought he was third. Yes, yes. right, that's right. Here. So I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah, he was third. Um, Luke Schoolmaker came off yeah. of injury. He was the second-round pick. He's back on the field. You also lost David Durden, who was an undrafted receiver. That was, that was a long shot to make it, but he lost. You lost him to ACL as well. Um, who else Stevens. did you lose? You lost your young young John Stevens, the tight end. You lost him to ACL. He was most likely going to make the team. He probably would have bumped Sean McEwen out of his fourth, you know, most likely right. last roster spot for tight end position. Think that well, let's go. He made it major. back, right? Well, let's go. He got hurt. Matt Walesco made it back, but he's not back. Okay. And I'll let you kind of speak to that, Nate. Matt Walesco, he's back on the field. And when we say he's back on the field, is because he last year what kept him out was he sublexed his shoulder. He needed labrum surgery on his shoulder. He got that. I am very familiar with that because I had three of those surgeries. I had two of those surgeries when I was here in Dallas. So very familiar back-to-back years. Once that that part of your body is compromised, you can do a lot of things to strengthen it back up, but it will never be as as structurally sound as it was prior to your injury. Uh, There are positions that put you, there are positions that you get in that leave you susceptible to injury, re-injury. And as a receiver, I would find myself in a position where my arm would get above my, above level 
and I would try to stop myself from falling, right? Somebody would take my right. ankles or my knees out, Nate, and I would try to stop myself from falling or, or brace my fall. And the amount of, amount of pressure that was coming down on my shoulder, my shoulder couldn't take it. So my shoulder would give out. That joint would 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 um wow. be compromised, and my shoulder would pop back out of socket again. It's a little ball joint called a labrum, and your shoulder sits in it. And once that wa- – it's like a washer – once that little washer gets compromised, your shoulder is susceptible to just slip out. Wow. Right. So it's structurally un- unsound. So even after I had surgery, I strengthened it up, came back. Same as that injury happened, Nate. I had to get surgery again. Matt, well, let's go have that surgery last year. This year, he came back. He was on the field in the preseason and subplexed his other shoulder. This time it was his right shoulder. And this one is even more important because – what side of the field right does he play on? Nate? So that right arm is always out right there trying of, to punch something. The right arm is always extended and is susceptible to injury even more so because you don't have anything. You're not double teaming with anybody. You don't have anybody to brace that shoulder against, right? You right. can't sit with that arm kind of like an alligator arm, like you would say, Nate, right? right? Um, and keep that thing in tight. Now you're doing what? You're extending that arm, right? That arm right. is out mm-hmm. there in no man's land. And he did that to his right shoulder. So even though it's not getting talked about at this date that we're talking about right now, I can't foresee him being a viable solution at that position. You know, him or Josh Ball with the uh, hip, you know. Hip. Yeah. It's, and, that's their, and that's their last two. That's two of their last three investments yeah. at the offensive line position. Yes. Ball, well, let's go in Tyler yeah. Smith. Tyler Smith, well, obviously the first round pick from last year. That that worked. Right. This is a this offensive line needs help. And I, I'm quite sure that uh Will McClay and Stephen is Stephen Jones is scouring the uh the uh the uh the cut lines or cut, cut downs. downs and yeah. Uh maybe even uh like you know, that fourth round pick we uh so easily gave up. We should maybe held on to that. But we we're gonna need a baller, yeah. bro. We're gonna need offensive linemen if we're gonna be successful this year. We're gonna need that. Hold better on, guy. Nate. Oh, you just you just opened up a whole can of worms. So now that we've kind of gave you guys a synopsis of these first three preseason games, Will Greer, the third string quarterback for the Dallas Cowboys, did not have a great showing in his second game. He did not. And it was primarily predicated on the fact that he did not have great decision making, which has been his downfall. It hasn't been his talent. It hasn't been his smarts. It hasn't been his his arm strength, his attributes, his, his ability to run. It has been his decision making. They made a move, Nate, and they went ahead and acquired last year or no, sorry, two years ago third overall pick for the San Francisco 49ers in Trey Lance. At the time, Trey Lance had played one year of of college football at South Dakota. Uh, The Bison, he, I think, had 27 touchdowns or something like that, zero interceptions, just completely balled out. But he he didn't have a lot of experience. And they traded up three first-round draft picks and a third-round draft pick to spend an additional first round draft pick on him. So people say, oh, they traded a third, you know, two, three first and a third. I say they use four first yes. and a third to acquire him. Four first round picks, Nate, and a third for potential. Have you ever seen anything I like that? I never did it. That was worse than uh, Ricky Williams. Uh, uh, deal with the Saints back when <laughs> back in the day where they gave with their whole draft for him. I mean that yeah. that that was terrible then. Uh at least Ricky turned out to now. be <laughs> so sweet running back in the end. Trey Land's yeah. story has not been told yet. But uh mm-hmm. that that's a lot. But I, I gotta give it to the forty nines. They they said in their minds enough is enough. So I got you know, him. yeah, yeah. So they they pulled the trigger and got rid of him just as quick as they pulled the trigger to use up all them draft resources to get him. 
Yep. Wow. So they made the big investment. That investment did not pay off for them. Two years later, through I think he brought, you know had an ankle injury that kept him out of one season, and then the following season, Brock Purdy stepped in and became the man. They are fully confident in Brock Purdy and Sam Darnold. He lost the backup quarterback position, and so the 49ers wanted to just wash their hands of him. They traded. They made the phone call to Double J. If the Dallas Cowboys made a trade offer for a fourth round pick, they took it. So Dallas gave up a fourth round pick. They picked up their third, currently their third string quarterback in Trey Lance. And the murmurs have begun. The yes. murmurs have begun. They, yes. What, what does, what, what do ye say about Trey Lance entering the quarterback room? And what does that mean for Dak? That, uh, this year here, nothing, completely nothing. Okay. I, I believe this, Isaiah, and I said, and I really mean it. If something happened to Dak within the next four to five or six weeks and Will Greer has not been picked up, I, I mean, have you checked the waiver wires? Uh, if, real, if Will Greer has not been picked up, that will be our second-team quarterback. It will be Cooper Rush as a starter. They will bring back Will Greer because it will be an injustice to do this to Trey Lance. You know, and I, I don't care how quick a learner he is, how great he's supposed to be, what his potential is. Why would you do this to this kid? Why would you give him a, a fourth round pick and not let him sit the rest of this year as a as a true uh, journeyman, a guy who's learning the system, a guy who's uh, getting uh, acquainted with the team? So this means yep. nothing this year. Where the big picture comes is. Uh, during the off season, how will right. he soak up the playbook? How much will he learn? How much will he know? And more importantly, when will the the, the true negotiations start for Dak and his extension? Now, it may play a role in that, but other than that, right, so you know, gonna it you, may play you, a role. Do in you that. think this Trey Lance? Do you think that this Trey Lance move is going to mess with Dak's money? Uh, not as right now. I can't see it because this kid. Okay. has not been seen on the field since that one year in college when he had that fabulous yep. year. He's not been seen. He's been missing in action. So uh, even if they uh, just trying to throw a little salt in the game, it's not enough to change what's going to happen, especially if Dak is successful this year. You're saying it's no sea salt, huh? Yeah. It's, course, it's course salt out there. <laughs> yeah, I mean, where do you see Trey Lance at this point in this time? I think he's a undeveloped quarterback who is in a position to, to be molded to what the Cowboys want. Mm-hmm. And he is a physical specimen of an athlete. Yes. He is a pure athlete. And if you could take a pure yes, athlete sir. while he is – undeveloped and while he is still impressionable Mm -hmm. and you can get your hands on him, you might be able to develop a monster. And I think if you can develop a monster for a fourth round pick, I think you and I will do that all day long. Yes. I think the fact that the one thing that causes us apprehension is if we know the weak spots of Dallas and if Dallas was to solidify these couple weak spots they have, they would be a Mm -hmm. force. They would be there. They, they would be a complete force this year because this is really an all or nothing year for them. This is really, really is. Uh, things are going to change based upon what happens this year. This roster will not be the same. And you see that wonder behind me. You see that wonder behind me on the right. I do. That yes, that's sir. how big the Cowboys' wonder is. It is huge, <laughs> and it is a one year deal. I mean, you do you disagree? Yeah. Did, 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 no, did, did you see that window? That window right there is yes, it, it's wide open. I can throw my fat self through yep. it. That's how much room the Cowboys <laughs> got. If they don't take advantage of that window, it's going to close down, and it's going to be a lot of things shaking and baking after this year. You know? Yes, I agree. So you don't mind – so you like the acquisition of Trey Lance. You just don't like it in place of the necessities that Dallas still yes, has. We, we, we need offensive linemen, my man. And this will be a yeah. masterful job for Coach Mike Solari, but it's going to be a hard job. I mean, uh, he's yeah. got a lot of energy, man. I was just like to see by the eighth and ninth game, 
but our record is and see if he still has this amount of energy if we have any <laughs> see if yeah, still got we that have juice? any injuries. <laughs> I, I feel, you know, I love Coach Solari. You know, you you've known him. Yeah. Uh he's a, been a Seahawk guy and we we know him. And yep. uh he's a hard worker, he's diligent, but he he's working with five linemen. He don't know what these young guys gonna do. Yep. He don't know, I mean right. and we brought in Idaga. Uh he ain't yeah, he, he ain't him, yeah. practiced since I don't know when. When I he mean, was injured. Is, is he still with us? I mean, for us, I know he's, he's on injured. the team. Yeah, he's injured. But I ain't seeing. You know, I'm I'm looking for him. Tell tell him I'm looking for him. Yeah, he's injured right now, Nate. There's um, there's a lot up in the air, man. It's a lot up in the air. Uh, but as they I try to address these questions, and obviously, you know, we won't know prior to this show airing, but. We'll get another show in to be able to talk about the moves, right. the final decisions that the Dallas Cowboys made. But they have some tough cuts. They have some tough decisions. They have an opportunity prior to the deadline to make some trades yes. and using some of their assets they have on the defensive line specifically, because I believe that's the only position that they have assets that they can trade. Yes. Mm. Yeah, if they, if they, you know, I think they've been very aggressive, more aggressive than we've seen in the past in this off season. And I think if they continue that, but the, you know, keep as we like to say nowadays, and they keep that right. energy. Uh, if they're able to keep that energy and be aggressive to go out there and acquire some offensive linemen, or offensive line men or men, either one, we'll take either. Um, I think they will position themselves for an excellent opportunity at a run. At this, at getting the dog on ring, and that ring would be so sweet. No, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going that far. I know I'm you're not going, going there. That I know far. you're not going. I'm just, I just think about it. I'm just thinking about it. Like, can you imagine the ring that Jerry would would, would yeah, design? Yeah, I understand all of that. But can they just, can they just get to the <laughs> NFC Championship game playoff? I know. I, mean, I know. I know. This they, thing, this thing has been hunting them for a lot of years. Yes, and, it has. Uh, I like to talk Super Bowl, and it, it seems like they're sick of it. it it seems like they're sick of it, though, Nate. And that's what I'm saying. Their approach to the offseason indicates that they're tired of it. Yeah. They have never been this aggressive. They've never been able to go grab. They would never win and go grab a Brandon Cooks, like a Stephon Gilmore. They didn't do these things in the past. Trade for a, a, a potential starter eventually at the quarterback position to add, you know, controversy in that room. Regardless, they don't care about the controversy. They care about solidifying right. their position. So th- it's a different it's a different mentality in that front office right now it's a completely different mentality in that front office and i like it i'm here for it i like competition too uh i would like to say this right here is um i I need for my man bozzy smith our first round pick to understand that he's an important part of this team and that yes sir he gonna have to pick his game up and i know it takes time i'm not one of those guys that Oh, just because you're a first right. round pick, you should do things. But I would like to see a little bit of growth. And I'm hoping that by him seeing Jonathan Hankins handle his business in practice and in games, yeah. that he will understand uh, his role. I mean, because uh, he did bring in uh, a sense of uh, heightened awareness to Bohannon. And I think to Gallimore, they had good training camps, Correct. they practiced better. Yeah. They were in practice more, so uh, he he did do that. But now we need him to just take that six inches to the left or six inches to the right and start being a better uh, run defender. With you, I'm with you. I'm with you. All right, big Nate. Hey, Nate. So you know our sponsor on this show is Niagara Corporation, and they do a great job. With their products, I had actually I had an opportunity Nate to go to their mm-hmm. headquarters right there in Flower Mountain, mm-hmm. Texas, and wow. brand new facility. They created it from scratch. It's right. amazing. We I was I had the opportunity to go through a whole tour, and I tell you what, Nate, their line of toilets. I never thought that I would be impressed by toilets. <laughs> I'm just telling you, Nate, I never thought it. I right. never thought it. But I tell you what, once you see some of the designs that they have at toilets, not only the exterior right. design but the engineering right. that goes into it because I, I actually I, I got some yeah. I got a toilet I had them installed right. at the crib and my wife wanted some toilets I said you know what I know where we can get some yeah. toilets so I reached out to our people at Niagara and they they were, they were able to make it happen I got three new toilets at the house Nate 
And you ever heard of this thing called a bidet? Nah, nah. What's a bidet? Nate, this is, it, check this out. This is crazy. So a bidet is from Eastern. Oh, I understand. The east side, yes, sir. The, the, oh, yeah. the east side. Okay, over the east side. Over, yeah. over the ocean. And they got a little thing that come out and it goes, and it spray your butt. Lord, Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Lord, Jesus. <laughs> uh, Nate, your little thing, after you, after you on took care of your business, little thing come out and it goes, and it spray it right, right in your, in your tootie. Wow. And, and it cleaned the tootie for you. And then guess what, Nate? Then you ha- it has a little remote control. You ever had a toilet with a remote nah, control? Man. It has, it's a toilet remote control and you could, you could change the water temperature. Right. You could change the water temperature and you could make it cold, warm, or hot. And it, right. and you spray your boot and, and you can turn it on and it, and it keep going until you turn it off, Nate, and it gets you all clean. And right. then guess what, Nate? You can hit the stop button and then you can hit a button that says dryer. You hit a dryer oh, okay. button, Nate, and all of a sudden, right, okay. And it come on in in a dryer okay. booty. So now you brought me one of these. And my package, sure and my package was kind of damaged. So I gotta call them and try to see can I replace this right We're here. We're gonna get you taken so, care of, Nate. So, you was out there, you was playing Apple so Jacks with yours. You right here. <laughs> so even a booty big as mine, you think <laughs> Hey, listen here. Listen here, Nate. Your rooty, your your booty, your tooty gonna be clean as a fresh on fruity. <laughs> oh Lord Jesus. Okay. That's enough of that. <laughs> hey, you know what you're gonna say, Nate, at the end of it? We're gonna flush another one. That's what you're gonna say. We're gonna I flush like another that, I like one. That. I gotta call the man and get my replaced, man. Yeah. We'll get you taken care wow. of, you, Nate. Dog. We appreciate our people over at Niagara. Thank y'all for always looking yeah. out for your boys here on oh, Let Me Tell You Something. Until next time, y'all. Holla back. We'll Thank see y'all you. then. Clean back in. <laughs>